(laughs) What do I know? I'm just a girl on the internet. Welcome or welcome back. If this is the first episode of mine you're ever seeing, might I advise you to go listen to some other episodes because this one is going to be a little different, okay? Usually on this podcast, I try to bring a little self-help, a little big sis energy, We're talking about life, about our problems, about ways we can better ourselves, tips, tricks, life advice. You get the vibes. I don't know, guys. We just need to have like a quick office meeting. Everyone in my office, lock the door, check your calendar. Um, I have no advice to give in this episode. I have nothing inspirational to say. This is merely a we're hanging out, we're chatting. I've got some stuff to tell you, and I feel like only you guys would care about this. Realistically, could I be telling my friends? Absolutely. Will I project it to the internet? A hundred percent. Grab a snack, get comfortable, and let's discuss. Non-sponsored beverage of the pod, an Olipop, strawberry vanilla, a flavor that can do no wrong. I met the man of my dreams on an airplane this past weekend. There, I said it. Okay, I met my soulmate on an airplane, and I will never see him again. What is all this about? Let's just, first of all, let's talk about how the universe doesn't ever want me to be happy or in a relationship. The amount of times in my life I have met a man and they have been so lovely and they have checked all the boxes for me just for them to not live here, to be from out of town, to be in another relationship. And on that one, I will preface, I If they're in another relationship, I've simply met them, chatted with them, and then moved on. There was never anything more than that, because obviously if they're in a relationship, I'm not trying to be a homewrecker. But you can also talk to someone who's in a relationship and be like, wow, this person is amazing, checking all my boxes. And then, of course, they either show the wedding ring or they'll just say, hey, I'm in a relationship. I leave it at that. I'm not a homewrecker for the record. But I am not kidding when I say I have met a handful of really lovely men and Timing-wise, location-wise, fill-in-the-blank, life, whatever, it just doesn't work out. I don't know. I don't know what kind of cruel joke that is. I have no idea. I have a whole podcast episode about right place, wrong time, or right person, wrong time, or something like that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is that to a T. Um, this is this is pretty much that. A week or so ago, I was in Dallas, Texas. I got to go to an event with the brand Olive and June, which they are a lovely little nail polish stick on nail nail brand i would love to talk more about the event at the end of the episode but right now we're talking about man on the plane okay i have an absolutely lovely weekend at the brand event i had so much fun i met so many lovely people i met a few subscribers it was just so much fun got to stay in this lovely hotel the statler in dallas just beautiful place so i'm traveling home on a tuesday my flight was I think later in the afternoon, like maybe three o'clock or so that I'm leaving Dallas flying back to Charlotte. One thing about me when I'm flying is that I will always, always, always be the last to board. I don't care. I love getting to an airport as early as possible. I know the whole two hour rule is kind of more for international flights, but best believe if I am flying domestically, I'm still going to be at the airport one to two hours early. Why? First of all, I want to make sure the gate exists. Second of all, I want to get a coffee and I want to sit and I want to people watch. Third, I might get a cocktail four, I might get a snack. Okay. I just like to people watch and go sit somewhere and just be inside the airport. That That is one place I will not run late to is an airport or catching a flight. I will sit and have all this leisure time, but I will also be the last to board the plane. A hundred percent. You can catch me dead standing when the plane lands on the tarmac and being the first in line to board the plane. I don't care if I'm flying first class or not. I will be the last to board the plane or in the last 10 people or so. Because why would I get on the plane in that group one, group two, group, just to sit? Like what? Like that is the worst. I would rather be standing, stretching my legs, getting ready to go at the gate until they do that final boarding call. And then I'm like, that's me. That is me. This is important to the story only because when I get on the plane, obviously it's full. I'm walking down the aisle Every single seat is taken. They already told us it was like a super full flight, whatever. And I get a good glimpse at my seat. I grabbed a window seat. I could see it back there. And in the middle seat is this very tall, very handsome man in the middle seat. It's like an older woman, this man, and then my empty seat. And I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) 
period. Okay. Like I'm excited. Usually my seat on a plane is next to a screaming child without fail, or I'm next to some like creepy older man who like man spreads his legs or accidentally touches me on the flight or smells like they haven't showered in six months. That's usually what I get on an airplane. I never have good luck flying ever. I mean, good luck in the sense of like, the, the flight is fine. Everything is fine. But in terms of like who I sit next to, which is never, I never have a, have a nice story to tell except for this time. So I get up to the, I get up to my row and I'm like, Hey, that's, I was like, Hey, yeah, that's on the window seat. And he's like, okay, cool. And then him and then the lady stand up. So I just like wiggle into my seat and sit down. And this lovely man who I later learned his name is Jason sits in the seat next to me. Obviously he's in the middle seat and I'm talking six foot plus. And this is a beefy man. I'm talking broad shoulders, long legs, large hands. Oh my God, his hands were so nice. Okay. He sits next to me and he's so broad that he's kind of overflowing into my seat a little bit. I don't even mind. Like our thighs are touching because, you know, the damn seats are so small in a freaking airplane. Our thighs are touching a little bit. Our shoulders are touching. He's got broad shoulders. I got broad shoulders. I'm like, okay, this I'm fine with because usually it's, again, like an older creepy man that I'm like brushing shoulders with. So this I'm fine with. This man looks at me and kind of like a little side view like that. He said, sorry, I'm in your seat a little bit. I'm a big guy. I literally said, no, I'm like, no, it's okay. It's fine. Whatever. I love getting a window seat because I was like tuck myself into the window and I'm like reading a book or something like that. Or if I fall asleep, I can like put my head on the window or something and I go, oh, it's it's fine. I was like, don't worry about it. It's like not your fault. And he reaches his hand over. So his right hand goes toward the left and he goes, I'm Jason, by the way. And I was like, this man this is about to be a me cute. This is so, okay. This is so cute. <laughs> so I reach my left hand over and then it's his right hand, my left hand. And it's like an awkward. And then I like kind of like show my right hand. And then it's like an awkward, like well, we're so close. So we kind of do this little awkward, like hand exchange thing where we're just like, oh, 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 oh. And it's really cute. And um, we eventually shake hands, but it was like kind of a funny thing. And I was like, oh, I'm Kayla. Nice to meet you. Have my headphones in, have my book, whatever. And uh, I noticed that my headphones are dead. I didn't pack my AirPods. I had these like bows over the head headphones. And I was like, oh, shoot. So I like tuck them in the seat and I just kind of sit for a minute. And he's like, no music. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, my headphones actually are dead and I don't have the charger. It's like in another bag. I don't feel like getting it out right now. He's like, oh, that's okay. Music's overrated. He's like, I'm here if you want to chat. <laughs> he wanted to chat with me. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? All I can do now is think, okay, this very attractive man in a seat on an airplane next to me wants to chat for the foreseeable time while we're in flight, which I have a three hour flight back to Charlotte, by the way. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we just begin chatting. I mean, it's just like a cute little, what were you in Dallas for? Are you flying to Charlotte? Like, do you live there? Like just kind of a get to know each other kind of situation. I ended up telling him that I was just visiting some friends in Dallas. I didn't have the heart to say it was an influencer event because sometimes it's just like, I don't want that to like bring up other questions. I was like, oh, I was visiting some friends. What about you? He's like, oh, I actually live in Dallas. My family moved here when I was super young, but I'm from Charlotte originally. And he said, oh, I'm going to visit my grandmother. She still lives there, but like the rest of my family moved to Dallas when I was when I was a kid. And um, my family doesn't visit her a lot. So I like to make an effort to visit her a few times a year. This beautiful late 20 year old man visiting his grandmother for the weekend, for the week actually, he said he was gonna work remotely and go see her and just spend time with her. Oh my God, oh my God. And then he went to show me a photo of her on, her fo- on his phone. He like unlocked his phone, obviously we're like airplane mode, whatever. And when he unlocks his phone, What is his screensaver other than a photo of his cat? A photo of his cat. The man, the man has a cat. The cat's name was Socks. I'm literally, literally, that was going to be it for me. He literally had a cat, black and white cat named Socks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll do it for me right there. That's going to do it for me right there. That's Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So immediately he unlocks the phone. I'm like, is that your cat? And he's like, yeah, this is my cat. Her name is Socks. Hi, I'm I'm in love with you. I'm sorry. 
So then I get my phone out and then I show him photos of Daphne and I'm like, this is my cat. And then we're talking about our cats for the next five minutes. Are you this? Hi, this is the best meat cute I've ever had in my entire life. Someone write a book about this. Oh, I could keep screaming. So we're talking about our cats for a few minutes. And then we talk about like how cats are actually superior to dogs. People that hate cats just don't know boundaries. Um, cats are self-sufficient, blah, blah, blah. Like all the things I say all the time about cats, he's saying as well. He shows me a few photos of him and his grandma. And then he shows me fo- photos of his family, which I didn't even ask to see. But he's like, oh, I just like love my family so much. Like, I really wish we still lived in Charlotte. But, you know, th- we we like moved here when I was younger because my dad and his job and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, oh, my God. So if you lived in Charlotte, you might actually be soulmates. We might actually, this might actually be something. So we keep chatting. We're talking about work, life, like where we grew up, things like that. I asked him about what it was like living in Dallas, like if he had any memory of living in Charlotte. We are just two pals chatting here on the plane. The best part about all of this is he has this banter that is so hot. And one thing about me, if you're going to flirt with me, if we're going to have like anything going on here, you got to have some banter. You got to be like quick on your feet. You got to be like making little jokes or even like tiny little insults that are like banter. Like I'm not saying I want to be insulted, but like we love some banter going on. And his banter was top tear he was making little like banter jokes about my height because he was like six foot plus and i'm only five four contrary to popular belief because people on the internet think i'm way taller he was like making jokes about my height about like me trying to like grab something or i was like trying to change like the air the ac button that's on the plane and i was like trying to reach it and like get it right and i kept i kind of did it like three or four times to get it right and then he reaches over and does it for me he reaches up and changes where the air is going for me until it's hitting me perfectly And then he made like a little joke about my height. And then again, the banter was just, I can't even off the top of my head, like think of some of the things that we were like joke bantering about, but it was so good. I was like, oh my God, I wish we were hanging out after this because anyways, there's a normal pause in conversation. The flight attendants start handing out drinks and snacks. I kind of take this as a moment to get my book out and I'm like, I'm just going to do a little reading because I love to read on a plane, whatever. I'm like, him and I have had like great conversation. We're chatting, we're flirting. It's like so great. And I'm like, while all this is great and fun and lovely, I'm trying to like chill because I know realistically, like I'm never gonna see this man again. I'm trying not to get my hopes up because I do be getting my hopes up. I do be wearing my heart on my sleeve sometimes. And I'm just like, whatever, like we'll just have a normal break and like see what happens. So I start reading my book. I was reading for a little while, nothing exciting there. And then probably like 30 minutes, 45 minutes later, I put my book away and then I just take a little nap, a little close my eyes. So I usually like cross my arms like this and like lean my head back into the seat, like the headrest, or I'll like lean my head onto the uh, the window. I was doing one of those sleeps <laughs> where you're like asleep and your head bops forward and then you like pick it back up. So after I bop my head down like four times, can't keep control of my head and neck, I decide, okay, the nap's not happening. I get my book back out. I start reading my book again. He looks over at me and he goes, so I guess the nap thing didn't work out so well. And I look over at him and I go, yeah, you know, it's like when you can't control your head and your neck muscles and you're just like falling down and you think you can sleep on a plane and then that happens. He's like, yeah, I've actually never had that problem. He's like, I don't usually get the opportunity to sleep because I'm so tall. My head doesn't even touch like the headrest. So then immediately I go, oh my God, wait, I have to show you something. And I like reach back into like the back of the seat or whatever. And I bring my hands out together and I start doing this. And for those of you who are listening to the pod, not watching, first finger and thumb and you rub it together. And I go, this is me playing the world's smallest violin. (laughs) And so then we're just giggling at each other. And then he goes, for what it's worth, I've heard it's pretty comfortable. And again, for those of you who aren't watching the video, he taps his shoulder and goes, for what it's worth, I've heard it's pretty comfortable. This man just indirectly told me I could nap on his shoulder mid-flight. I feel, I, I'm not kidding. I feel like I was being punked because this is the type of shit that happens to me and no one ever believes me because I can't get a freaking date to save my life in real life and normal day-to-day activities on a freaking dating app. I mean, I can, they just end up being terrible or problematic or they stand me up or whatever. Meanwhile, I have McDreamy on an airplane who is flirting with me the whole flight and 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 for what? And for the universe to just tear us apart afterwards. 
for me to never see this man again. I do not understand. I don't understand. I think this was someone that was sent by the government, forced to sit next to me on a plane and make me feel special for three hours. And that was it. So I'm dealing with that. I've got little butterflies in my stomach and I'm just like, this man right now is just, I don't know what I did to deserve it. I don't know why I get the tease of a nice man only to be left alone at the end. So as the the end of the flight is nearing, I get my book out again. I'm catching the last little bit of sunlight that's peeking through my window. Mind you, I'm just going to keep reading until it's pitch black and I can't see anywhere because I'm not really a fan of the overhead reading lights on planes. I feel like if the plane is vibey and quiet and dark, like just flicking that light on, it's so bright and obnoxious. And I get it. Like some people love to use it and they read on planes or they're older and they need that light. And that's fine. But it's not like my go-to thing. I don't really love to turn the light on. But I'm like, again, scrunched against the window and I'm just like really into the book. And the book is actually really good. So I'm like flipping through the pages and I'm like, I'm trying to get like, I'm trying to keep reading until I like physically cannot see anymore. And as I'm reading, all of a sudden my overhead light is on. My overhead reading light is turned on. And who does this other than Mr. Six Foot Three next to me? He turns on my reading light, not even his reading light or whatever. He turns mine on. And as soon as I, I literally, it's like a freaking rom-com. Like this is so not real. So I'm like reading my book. I notice the light comes on. I look up at my light and then I look over at him and he goes, I just thought that helped you see a little bit better. Oh my God, when a man does a small, nice gesture for me, I'm like, okay, so you're in love with me. So you're in love with me. That's what I'm getting from this. I thanked him for turning on the light and he responds with, yeah, I watched you get closer and closer to the window as possible and I knew you were having a hard time. So I figured I would just make your life a little bit easier. Oh, so you were watching me. Oh, okay. So you were staring at me the whole time. Okay, great. Okay, cool. And mind you, The whole time that we are on this flight, this man is so large, he is trying his hardest to like squeeze his body in. And he has like the little tray table down the whole time. And this is what he does. Let me show you what he does with his hands. If you're not watching the video version, you're you're missing out. But this is what he does with his hands like half of the flight. So he has a little phone in the phone holder. And then he has the tray down and this is what he's doing to try to make himself smaller and fit in the seat. squeezing his shoulders in crosses his hands over and he's like gripping the tray table all i'm gonna say is every time i looked over at that man's hands and i saw him gripping on that table oh oh my god it's so hot it's so hot in here right now oh my god his little like hand veins were popping out oh my god oh my god and he anytime i'm near a man who is who is like that and isn't man spreading or being creepy, that's already like a 25% chance I'm going to like you a little bit more. He could have easily like man spread those legs in that seat to prove he was all tall and whatnot. Uh Uh-uh. When I tell you this man had his legs like up on his tippy toes, squeezed in toward each other, trying to make himself small in this center seat. Oh my God. Oh my God. The respect I have for this man. Because the amount of men who man spread and try to take up as much space as possible. And this man was trying to shrink himself for me to not feel uncomfortable. Oh, I could have died right there. Oh my God. I could have died right there. Every so often though, when he would reposition himself, like his shoulders would like hit mine or like his thigh would touch into mine and he'd be like, sorry. And I'd be like, don't worry about it. I'd always try to say something like different and flirty every time he would apologize for it. I'd be like, don't apologize. Or I'd be like, it's not your fault. Or don't worry about it or something like something of sorts like that. And I was trying to make it very clear that I was picking up what he was putting down and that the energy between us was going real strong. And even though we won't be able to ever see each other after this moment, like I'm going to, I'm going to eat this up in the moment. Oh yeah. I'm going to flirt with you for the entire plane ride simply because I'll never see you again, simply because we're not going to exchange numbers. We're not going to see each other again. You don't live here. I don't live there, but I will just enjoy every moment of it because again, I know how the universe works. The universe wasn't going to let me enjoy this. It wasn't going to be like he was going to get off the plane and we're going to exchange numbers. Nope. As soon as we got off the plane and we went to, to baggage claim, never saw him again. It was like a fever dream. Okay. It was like not real. Before we even get to baggage claim though, of course, when the plane lands and we're getting up and moving around, this man gets my bag out of the overhead bin for me. And then I make a joke and I was like, you didn't want me to get yours. You didn't want me to take advantage of my height to get your bag for you. And then we laugh. And then he said, it was a pleasure riding next to you. I mean, I'm thinking about a different kind of writing, but 
Sure. Riding next to you was fantastic as well, buddy. And then uh, we get off the plane. I mean, he must have booked it and ran because I didn't see him after that. And uh, yeah, my baggage claim, nowhere to be found. It feels fake. I get off the plane. I'm like, was I asleep that whole time? Was it my Prozac giving me crazy dreams again? Was this real, in fact? Uh, but it was very much real. It was lovely. I um, Is this going to be creepy? Hold on. I took a photo. <laughs> took a photo of his hand um this might be the creepiest thing i ever did let me find it for you um I, we should have taken like a selfie or something i should have done one of these little like sneaky like hello click take a photo kind of situation but you're not on the phone on the plane like this you're not on the phone like taking a phone call so if i would have done that would have been really weird let me show you <laughs> it's like hard to tell this is so, I literally took a photo of this man's hand. Let me zoom in a little bit. And this, at this point, this photo, you can tell that the reading light was on this man's hand. Oh my God, is this creepy? Probably. Are we seeing this? This man's hand, it doesn't, this photo doesn't even do it justice. But this man's hand was probably the size of my head. So with all of that to say, I met my soulmate on an airplane. I'll never see him again. Jason from Dallas, Texas. If you were on a flight to Charlotte, American Airlines, and you're watching girl on the internet, hit me up. Just come on now. You're visiting your grandma. I, I can give you a place to stay. I mean, yeah. Could I have gotten his number? Sure. Could we have exchanged? But there, there was like, there was a reason we didn't exchange numbers, you know? And honestly, if he was dating somebody, ooh, that's going to suck real bad. But there's like, it just there was a reason we didn't exchange numbers. It just didn't, we kind of, I don't know, I knew in my head. I was like, if I exchange numbers, I'm never going to see this guy again. Like, it's not, I'm like, I'm not traveling to Dallas for a man. Um, there was just some kind of like unwritten, unspoken rule where we just did not exchange numbers. We're like, let's just be flirty on a flight for three hours and then we'll just never talk again. It just kind of felt right to not exchange numbers because I thought about it for a minute. I was like, do I give this guy my number? Like, what are we, what's happening here? But then I was like, no, like, he's here for his grandma. He's going to go back to Dallas. He could have a girlfriend. Like, I don't even know. He didn't have a wedding ring on. So, and also I was thinking to myself, this man is so big. I was like, either why didn't you sit in the aisle or get like a first class seat? Cause he really was too big for a commercial airline seat. Like too, too, like what's the bit, the big and tall section at like a, a men's store. He was definitely big and tall. That is pretty much the summary of the flight. And how the universe is really cruel to me specifically. Because again, can I have that interaction in person with a man here in Charlotte? No. Mm -mm. Not even close. But am I going to have that with a random stranger on an airplane? A hundred percent. Who I'm never going to see again? A hundred percent. And I can name like five other men I've ever met with very similar stories like that. Um, so I don't know what kind of joke the universe is playing on me. I don't know what this means. I hope he told his grandma about me. Better yet, I hope he told Socks about me. I hope he got home and he's petting his little cat and he told Socks, his little cat, about me. And honestly, the event was great too, but I feel like no one even cares about that at this point. <laughs> so that's how my weekend was. And on top of it, I got to go to Dallas for an influencer event where Olive and June did this like crossover collab with Colleen Hoover because Colleen Hoover's book covers are always very beautiful and springy and colorful and floral. So they just kind of did a collab because the CEO of Olive and June is a big fan of Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover found Olive and June at Target. So they just kind of like did a collab together and the nail polish colors are beautiful. The press-ons are beautiful. The whole event was lovely. It was a really, really good time. There were so many fun DIY stations creating your own bookmarks. There was a little, like a little flower shop where you got to create your own bouquet. We got these cute tote bags. We got a bunch of like PR and swag. We got like so many little press-on nails. Um, the whole event was so much fun. And also just hearing the CEO of Olive and June speak, it really just inspired me. Her name is Sarah Gibson Tuttle or SGT. She spoke at the event and I just felt like really empowered and inspired um, to hear like a woman CEO talk about her business and her brand and where it started from and where it came to be and her vision and her thought about it. Because even with like little stuff like my social media, my podcast and my YouTube, like I always think in a way that's like me building my own brand. So just to hear like really successful women talk about their story and their process of how they've made it this far. It was just really inspiring. So that was really cool. Then we got to hear Colleen speak. We did a little panel. We got to have free drinks and snacks and 
I met a couple of um, girls there that were in the Dallas area. I also met a few subscribers. I had just a lovely, lovely time. The event itself was so fun. And then to top it off, I had a lovely flight home where I met the man of my dreams. And then I woke up from that dream, essentially. Then I landed in Charlotte and then I had to go back to normal life. And then try to tell people about this experience. And then I was like, well, I got to come film a podcast episode and tell people about it because what do I do now? What do I do now? I think that's going to be it for me though, for this episode. I didn't think I could talk about a man for this long, but alas, here we are. I just had to tell you about my little meet cute because I don't get those very often. And we're, a win is a win. Okay. We're going to celebrate the little meet cute and all will be well in the world before I leave you completely. I haven't forgotten our random fun fact. The Louvre in Paris, France is the world's most visited museum. Roughly 10 million people visit every year. That's crazy. I've actually never been to the Louvre. I've never been to Paris, but maybe, maybe eventually. With that being said, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Make sure you go easy on yourself. And if you've ever had a meet cute experience or you've ever been in a situation like me where you met somebody and it was lovely and then you never saw them again, my heart goes out to you. Truly, my heart goes out to you. It'll be okay. We're going to find our people someday. That's all I have to say. Love you the most. See you next week with a new episode. Bye, friends.